Okay, next we'll talk about tier two interventions. Again, the primary problem analysis question is category of the problem, category of the deficit. Good interventions always have these three components. I do, we do, you do. In essence, I model it for the kid, then the kid and I work on it together, I make sure they can do it, and then they do it on their own. It's really important that in a tier two intervention that there's some modeling involved. And that's oftentimes the intervention component that some interventions, like especially those that are computer enhanced, et cetera, tend to forget. We've got to model it, demonstrate it, then work out together, and then have the kid do it on their own. And again, coming back to this idea of different areas of math proficiency and different interventions that address those, we're really still at tier two, still going to be heavily procedurally fluency oriented. Again, that's the skill which most of the kids struggle in, who struggle in math. And so again, we're trying to help as many kids as we can. In tier three is when, when we try and do whatever we can for individual kids. So then we really hit conceptual understanding. But for now, we're still gonna hit procedural fluency pretty hard. And what matters most in an effective tier two system is that we identify what the kid actually needs through diagnostic assessment. And in math, it generally involves working backwards in the curriculum to find instructional skill. So we and practice that with procedural. So what we mean is this. We take the skill sequence like this, which we developed, Amanda Vander Hayden and I did a study on this a few years ago. And here's a sequence for second and third grade, fourth and fifth grade, and even a sequence for kindergarten. Oops, and then um, backwards. So in essence, we will create a series of assessments that measures these things. Multiplication fact zero to 12, division fact zero to 12, fact families, multiplication division, multiply two, three digit with, with without regrouping, et cetera. And we develop quick little two minute assessments of each of these. We start at number 12, at the, the, in this example, the last objective we have, and keep assessing the kids until we find the area that represents their instructional level. Generally speaking, for kids at the elementary level, that's going to be around 14 to 29 digits correct per minute. I can talk about what that means, digits correct per minute. Hopefully that's something people are familiar with. But the idea here is we're just trying to work backwards to find the skill that represents the instructional level, and that's where we target our tier two intervention. So we will create a series of one, minute, one or two minute assessments it looks something like this, one digit by two digit which without regrouping, um, et cetera, and then deliver a small group intervention. So we get out the materials, uh, here's the steps, I'm not gonna walk through it, but basically again, still having kids practice quite a bit. What I suggest in the small group intervention is you've gotta model it. You gotta get the kids who all need a particular objective, get those kids together, work on it, present that, model it to the small group, make sure they can do it, then have them go practice on their own. I think one of the most important parts missing in small group tier two intervention for math is modeling. So we're gonna take all the kids, oops, wrong, take all the kids who are low in objective number four, multiply two and three digit with them without grouping, put those kids together, sit down with them for two minutes, do a quick modeling, show them how to do it, they all work out together, share with each other so they know what they're doing. Then they can practice a whole bunch on their own, and the teacher and eventually can move on to the next group. This is also, if your curriculum, math curriculum, has a pretty specific set of objectives, that works just as well as this. This is the one that we came up with as much more generic. Now, this, these probes here are, are taken from spring math which I'll, I'll plug just for a second here. This is a, a, an approach by uh, Amanda Vander Hayden, and it is designed to assess different areas in math and to use those to highlight what the kid needs. So for example, you look at this right here, and um, the student Tommy there, which is a made up kid, um, actually let's look at a different one. Let's look at, here we go, uh, Etta Schneider, top, top right up there, has a score of 14 on that fourth measure. I'm not sure what that fourth measure is off the top of my head. But this says the kid's low in that particular measure. So is, by the way, Virginia Murphy, the kid below that, and Winnie Fields, the kid below that. So those three kids, plus maybe Jonathan Guerrero in the bottom row, Bell Brock in the bottom row, and Eugene Delgado in the bottom row, might be put together into a small group, model the intervention, have them practice on their own. Spring Math is nice. It's a commercially prepared product that you purchase. Uh, I don't know which it is, but you purchase it, and it does basically the diagnostic and intervention all for you, so it's really quite nice. We'll stop there and next talk about tier three interventions.